niobium of the 110 orientation. Here's another set of uh, niobium films produced on Sapphire. We bought the Sapphire from a different vendor to try to understand if there's any difference in the two vendors. And again, what we see here is we increase the substrate temperature and the pre-bake temperature. The pre-bake temperature is a uh, temperature that the samples are held at at some given time in situ before deposition. So by increasing these, we get pure crystalline films that give us higher triple R's. Um, the highest triple R in this series was 155. So this is looking at uh, the epitaxial relationship and confirming that this is single crystal. So by theory, if we were to take a pole figure of 110 single crystal niobium, we would pop up four nearest neighbor peaks at 60 degrees in psi. And then the angles between these should meet the same constraints that you would expect from uh, inverse space of the lattice. So these two nearest neighbors should be about 109.5 degrees apart, and these two nearest neighbors should be about 70.52 degrees apart when you're looking at the, the inverse pole figure here. And this is experimental data, and what we're finding is that these two neighbors are 70.8 degrees apart, and these two neighbors are 198 degrees apart. So the pole figures are giving us uh, an incredible amount of information beyond the B&B &B scans, and it's a very valuable tool that I would urge anyone, you know, when you're exploring your, your thin films, if you have the opportunity or the availability of pole figures, to definitely look into your films because it can, it can definitely provide more information there. And this is basically, we're taking the 60 degree arc here and just laying it out as a line. So what you're seeing here are the peaks that correspond to these four nearest neighbors. And you can see again that the angles are agreeing very well with what we'd expect from theory of a 110 single crystal niobium sample. In the lower substrate temperatures, though, we were observing polycrystalline films. And at first, this was very confusing because, as you can see, two of the poles tend to overlap. So we were seeing a hexagonal structure come out of a cubic system. and we're, At first, it just didn't quite make sense. And then we realized that you know, two of the poles are overlapping here and giving us an elongated pole, and that we are actually observing a polycrystalline phenomena here where we have two domains of 110 that are growing preferentially on a given substrate. Um, we're not really going to speculate into why this is happening at this time. I'll throw out a couple of things in the conclusion that may be possibilities. But this is some experimental data that, that we've collected on the niobium samples. This is one possibility that it could be. It could be a twin symmetry in the niobium films. So what, it, what is a twin? A twin in a sample is where you have a plane that will rearrange in between two grains, and the two grains are, for lack of a better word, mirrors of each other. And that plane in between the two rearranges to come to a lower energy plane. It's a, a fairly strict microstructural requirement to be classified as twin symmetry, and we do not have the experimental data yet to confirm or deny whether this is, actually is twinning in the system. But if it were twinning, you would expect to see a 112 plane in between the two planes of um, 110. The direction of this plane is 111, but the plane itself is a 112 plane. And it, it is worth noting that on some of our B&B scans, we do detect a 211 plane in the niobium films. However, we do not have any TEM or anything of that nature that would confirm a twin boundary or twin domain in an IOVM sample. And so for now, we're just going to call it gross symmetry because we don't know what the root cause of the symmetry is, but it is observed by multiple systems, CED, ECR, and on multiple vendors' substrates. So it's definitely a real phenomenon. We're just not sure what the root cause is yet and what is, what is the consequence, if any. And here again, we're just showing how in an island growth mode, you could have two preferential orientations that both meet the epitaxial relationship presented by Wild. As these two domains grow in together, it's possible that they are producing a twin boundary. If, if these two are growing at these angles, 
then you would end up with an inverse pole figure reminiscent of this. And again, this is just presenting the theory for, for what it may be. So in conclusion, we've deposited uh, niobium thin films on sapphire by CED under different substrate temperatures and um, bake out temperatures. We've shown that we can increase the triple R to well over 100 by substrate temperature and deposition energies. And two preferred orientations were found in CED samples of uh, niobium on sapphire. And this research was supported by DOE and SBIR grants as presented.